for example, I'm going to just improvise using drills with our pages. And once you combine different drills and scale, uh, scales and our pages in very different ways with different twists here and there, you incorporate your, your own ideas, uh, you get closer to sometimes one simple sketch for improvisation or an interesting basic sketch for a later uh, composition to be worked out, for example. I'm inviting you to explore and um, why not create your own drills and your own patterns so that uh, your experience when you practice and warm up uh, with your pages and scales will give you much more pleasure and will relate you, will connect you um, more, will connect you stronger with your uh, music making or your work um, uh, with your repertoire or with your improvisation. You, would you like to uh, um, make a question? Would you like to suggest or recommend something? So at this point, you, you may ask your questions or if you want to try something, if you have your instrument, uh, near you, uh, go ahead and, and try something. We'll, we'll be more than happy to uh, give you some feedback. And, or just if you wanna try what, what Luis just uh, explained. Any takers? Or if I missed out on something? <laughs> Sasha. Hi, hello. How are you? Hi, I'm, Hi. I'm, doing, I'm doing well. Thank you. I, I really enjoy the um, the masterclass today, and it's it's so um, uh, similar to what I'm trying to do in my studio with my students. And uh, uh, yeah, Doctor uh, Doctor Luis is explaining the alternative ways to to practice, and um, I feel like that's direction where where I'm pointing. <clears throat> my studies and my teaching right now. So I, I don't know, um, I may, yeah, I, I like uh, so talking to my students about scales um, in a creative way. So there is one, one type of scales which, which we use for tests, such as certificate of merit and other, other tests similar to that, which is, um, Things like this, but I start, I, I start um, teaching them uh, how to uh, simply, uh, simply uh, learn uh, scales, but in a creative way, uh, using different patterns, like three note patterns. And um, I, I like, I like doing the in six as well. And then if we, for example, combine two different um, 
uh, patterns, one melodic pattern and rhythmic pattern, then we can uh, create an interesting rhythmic uh, swing. Like say, um, three note pattern can be um, structured as four 16 notes. And then it creates, uh, as, as, as Dr. Luis said, creates opportunity to find some um, uh, melodic motifs which may result in composition later. And um, I also like like uh, uh, practicing skills with chords and with the seventh uh, chords uh, later. Like we, we all start with, with basic scales. Fingering is very important from my point of view, but um, creating your own drills, as, as um, uh, Dr. Louis said, um, it gives much more pleasure. And um, yeah, I'm I become more interested myself in playing scales than than before as I teach that. And so, and that's what I was trying to say: uh, the the patterns, uh, rhythmic patterns and melodic patterns can be combined in different way than. Intervals can be combined. And I really like that rhythmic unit which you suggest to rhythmic stability. And um, I also like to use different chords or even seven intervals in the left hand. Very good, yes, yes. Very good. Let me tell you, uh, for beginners, it would probably uh, be too difficult to start up with um, seventh chords. So one 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 drill that I that I have found very useful is to let them just create their own counterpoint using the scale. Uh, very simple, like this. Just your the pattern in your right hand like this. But let them just imagine whatever uh, motion using the D major scale in this case, uh, uh, upward or downward. For example, I'm gonna play the, in this case downward like this. displacement if you happen to meet some student that has a little more uh, freedom from the very beginning some rhythmic displacement like this left hand and, and this will uh, make it easier sometimes uh, for or very often for these uh, young the young pianists or beginners could be also intermediate uh, uh, level uh, to uh, uh, approach to um, uh, voice um, uh, inventions by Johann Sebastian Bach. Because sometimes the, uh, these youngsters or these beginners, um, they are faced with the, uh, this counterpoint, this imitation of, uh, uh, that you find in, in two, invention, two voice inventions by Bach. Uh, without any uh, intro, without any uh, possibility to um, uh, figure out what is happening. So this is a very creative, very natural way to find out that these things are, are possible. You don't only have to uh, suffer the pain in reading uh, and trying to coordinate. Just let them feel free and coordinate whatever they like going upward for example with an uh, with a with a uh, uh, with a uh, arpeggio uh, in this case let's use the regular and simple basic form going only upwards like this but 
but here the, the uh, let them just play whatever notes in D major they like, like this. let them create their own possibilities it's, it's, there is no uh, way that they will be bored and and there will be less um, they will feel less frightened when they approach their first Bach in, in two voice invention or whatever other contemporary uh, two voice invention that uh, you might want them to learn or to experience so uh, I appreciate very much Sasha your your demonstration, and uh, this is the point. Uh, explore the uh, possibilities of uh, scales and arpeggios as they really are. These are not mere, mere uh, skills, technical skills. These are part of the whole body of uh, expressive structures that we use in, in music performance, in, in this case, piano performance. Yes, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Luis. And thank you, Sasha, for your for your input and your insight. Uh, it is and it brings up a, a really important point. Uh, introducing this to our students from an early age will help them feel a little bit more free, maybe less less nervous or less rigid in the structures because when we're when we're used to uh, just practicing scales up and down, up and down, our pages up, up and down, which uh, there's nothing wrong with that is actually absolutely necessary. Uh, but it, it can fall into like a sort of mindless routine. And then we lose a, an opportunity for creativity. So let's let's start introducing this a little bit more. Um, okay, and I think we have one last question. Uh, we got to make it quick because we're running out of time. So we have Oh, look at that someone is ha, has uh, taken the name Improv 2020. Uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, on, make sure you unmute your mic because we can't hear you. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I couldn't get in and then, then I thought they were asking for the password. No, my name is Sue. Uh -huh. um, I just appreciate how accessible um, you are making this. You know, it's something that they can actually do. So I didn't have a question. I just wanted to comment, so. No, thank you so much. Very, thank you very much, yes. All right, so um, <clears throat> we're going to leave it here for today. Uh, next week, we have a, a very uh, nice surprise. So make sure you tune in. We will be announcing it very soon. And uh, we'll, now that we come to a conclusion, please um, make sure that you follow us on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, please consider signing up for the courses that we're offering during the, during the virtual festival, uh, which is going to take place from uh, July 13th to 18th. Luis is going to be teaching an improvisation workshop where we're going to learn in-depth uh, concepts of improvisation and how to implement them on your own playing and on your students playing uh, as well as uh, how to utilize these tools for composition and other uh, in whatever really it is what that you want to do. Uh, remember that we also have master classes with other faculty, private lessons, uh, we have a, a online competition so our program is uh, open and has a variety for all kinds of interest. If you want to know more, visit our website, www.costaricapianofestival.com. And I hope to see you next week. And take care. Pura vida. I, I have a question. Oh, oh OK. Uh, sorry. Well, um, so will the, the number like 722, you know, the, the meeting number, will that change? Because I couldn't use the link and I, I wasn't getting emails. If, if you've been having these every week, I only got one like a month ago. Yeah, we've been sending them in the, in the newsletters. Uh, but if you subscribe to, okay. our, to, the, oh, okay. to the mailing list, you will, you will get it. I will see it and I'll send it to you personally. But this is the, is the same link. It's going to be the 722. It's going to be the same thing. Okay, because that's what I had to do to get on. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right, in the improv 2020. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, and we'll see you next week.
All right. Bye bye. Okay, bye. Except not next week because I can't. Okay. Except not next week because I can't come. Okay. But all right.